Today I've got a pretty cool product from Patriot to show you guys. This is the Javelin S4 Media Server. And what this does is pretty much everything that I can think of in terms of a standalone NAS box and some things that I actually didn't even think of. So why don't we start with what's on the packaging on the outside and then we'll go from there. So Patriot figures these are the main talking points. I have my own notes on what I think are the main talking points, so we'll compare them later on. First of all, it is an iTunes server, so you can use a single iTunes account for all computers in your network. That's handy, okay. It is a Logitech Squeezebox server, so you can stream to Logitech-enabled devices. That's also handy. You can do NAS to NAS backup, so you can actually image with another Javelin unit within your network or outside your network, so that means you can do off-site backups using a couple of Javelin units. That's very cool. And that's actually not something that was on my list, so I'm glad they brought it up. It is Time Machine compatible, so this is another Apple thing. Please don't, don't hit the dislike button. Time Machine compatible is a handy feature. It has a BitTorrent client, so you can download and manage all of your favorite torrent files um, remotely. Okay. Remote media playback, so you can stream your media through a web browser or iPhone slash Android mobile app. That one's really cool. That one, in my eyes, should be up at the top. UPnP and DLNA certified, okay, so you can seamlessly connect to other home media devices. And finally, you can share. You can show off your media with friends and family anywhere. So you can share files over the entire webs. All right, here we go. Product highlights. This is all pretty similar stuff. Oh, no, actually, there's more here. Okay, so data storage over the network and internet with mobile media center and dashboard. Access photo albums, documents, and more. So that's that internet sharing bit. Okay, you've got the DLNA digital media server, so that gives you instant access to your music pictures videos via digital media players on the home network, such as the Patriot box office. All right, um, Logitech squeeze box. Uh, one touch backup of an external hard drive or digital camera via USB. That's actually a really cool feature. That's something that's a software thing they've enabled that a lot of NASAs do not support with their USB ports. All right, NAS to NAS replication, we already covered that. Snapshot for instant backup and restoration. Backing up your home PCs is something that is critical for any NAS to do. Now, the software solutions are either very elegant or very terrible in my experience. So uh, that's something that I'm glad that Patriot has worked into the Javelin because backing up your PC is the only real solution. Running something like a RAID 1 in a home computer is not a real solution because if you get a virus, you still get wiped out. So doing nightly backups is something that I would definitely recommend to everybody. Smart sync backup for automatic client backup. Okay, good, good, good. Jumbo frame support. So this is a one gigabit NAS, so you do have fast transfer support. And it supports network print server via USB connected printers. You can access and attach and access USB and eSAT external hard drives as a folder share on the Javelin S4. So you can actually expand the storage beyond the four drive bays that are included with the Javelin S4. It has a two year warranty. And here is a little network map, which I'll show you more of in a minute, uh, which has a bunch of different ways that you can use the Javelin. So flexible RAID configurations. I mentioned it supports four drives. We, it supports a RAID 0 and a Stripe. I mean, okay, please, please never set up four drives in a RAID 0 in a backup device. That completely defeats the purpose. Don't do it wrong. RAID 1 mirror. This is a good way to set it up. So you can actually take two drives or four drives and you can set them up to mirror each other. So even if one, any one drive fails, you're going to have all of your data replicated somewhere else on a completely um, data identical drive. RAID 10 is mirror and stripe, performance and backup. I still don't really recommend it because you're going to be limited by gigabit ethernet anyway. You might as well just stick with your RAID 1s or your RAID 5s. So RAID 5 is three drives or more and it allows you to have any one drive fail and then you can put in another drive and rebuild the array as if it was never gone. So it supports the capacity of two drives with three drives. So it's quite a bit more efficient than RAID 1 where you need two drives to support the capacity of one drive, but you have the disadvantage of rebuild time if a drive does go down in the array. Now RAID 5 is cool, be, uh, with a spare disk is cool because you can throw four drives in your Javelin S4 if, and one of them is sitting there idling doing nothing. If any one drive fails, that idling, doing nothing drive will automatically build itself into the array to replace it, and then you can, at your leisure, take out the dead drive and put in a new one. 
The Javelin S4 does support three terabyte drives, so you can throw up to 12 terabytes of storage. Oh good, it's okay. Into this tiny little box. It comes very well packed, as you guys just saw. It's got a big old thick layer of foam on all sides of it. This is up to about an inch thick on all sides. So I really wouldn't worry about there being any damage to your drives or your javelin in transit. Alright, let's put that box back together. I wanted to show you guys that network map later, so I'll show that. And here, I'm just going to move back a little bit so you don't see my notes. All right, in terms of accessories, we don't have too much. We've got what feels like a very solid, very heavy duty ethernet cable with gold plated connectors. Looks like a six volt cable. And then we have a power adapter. Looks like it has a built in power supply. So no, uh, no external power brick. Very nice. Okay, we've got drivers and manuals. The fan contains hazardous moving parts. Don't, you know, put your fingers or other objects in it. You've got a quick start guide, which is like in a lot of different languages and stuff, so. You're covered pretty much no matter how things go. And this looks like some kind of a key. My guess is that it's to keep other people from just walking up to your javelin and pulling all of your drives out of it. I mean, it's so small, I'm guessing they could just grab the javelin. Unless it has a Kensington lock, which I can't tell yet if it does. This is actually kind of a slick looking little unit. That's another thing that a lot of NASs don't really have going for them, is they, they tend to look kind of dumb. And since it's something that you have to have either on or near your desk, it's, it's, it is nice when it looks good. Alright, so there's the javelin itself. And you know what, give me a second to get things organized here. Alright, so we finally got the unit itself out. All I have to do is push there, the door opens at the front, and I can see all four SATA interfaces at the back of the unit. It comes with four of these drive sledges, which are... Uh, you use to put the drive on and slide it into the unit itself. This did end up being a key, so you can actually lock this front door, no problem. But as I mentioned before, if I was going to steal something from a javelin, I would probably just take the whole javelin itself. It's fairly small, fairly light, although once you load it up with drives, it could be a little bit on the heavy side, and you don't want to move it around to avoid any damage to the drives. You've got a uh, compatible with Windows 7 sticker, as well as a DLNA certified sticker, Patriot logo, and then you've got your power button with a built-in LED at the front, and that pretty much does it for the front. You've got activity LEDs for the hard drives as well as a network LED here. On the back, we have a gigabit ethernet port. We have a hard reset switch. I love seeing hard reset switches because even the best software crashes sometimes. I actually had a tablet crash on me a little while back and it was very difficult to figure out how to reset it because it had no hard reset switch. Uh, okay, sorry, sorry, I was on a tangent here. Gigabit Ethernet port, eSATA interface, two USB interfaces, so that means you can have one of them permanently attached to a printer, for example, and you can have the other one uh, available for USB storage, whatever the case may be. And I'm sorry, this one on the back is actually the power button, and the one on the front is not a power button. So, what is the one on the front? I don't know. Okay, well I'll figure that out later. Alright, finally we've got an 80 millimeter cooling fan, we have our power in here, and then I just want to take a look at the overall construction of the unit. So, you can see here we've got access via the bottom panel to nothing that's screwed shut, but we do have four rubber feet here on the bottom, so that's going to keep the Javelin S4 from moving around when you've put it down on the table. It's also raised a little bit, so I don't know. Here, yeah, there's a good way to see it. So you can see that it's going to get some convection cooling coming up through the bottom, and that's where the fan is going to take in some of its air. That's at least based on my observation. And then the rest is going to come through these vents in the front, which have uh, a fine mesh over them, so it should be just a matter of going like this to clean the dust off them once in a while. And then there's also ventilation around the outside edge where air should be able to pass quite freely into the inside around the outsides of the door. So that's, uh, that pretty much takes care of ventilation. And it appears that this is not ventilation at all because you can see that once I open it up, there's actually no access to the bottom compartment from the top. So it looks like that's purely a power supply component. 
RTM, folks, RTM means read the manual. This is the one-touch backup button, so you'll use that every time you want to do a one-touch backup, which basically just means it's triggering a software event to run a pre-scheduled backup that you have configured already. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, next, a couple more things. So, Patriot recommends using Enterprise or RAID Edition class hard drives for maximum reliability when using RAID 0 or RAID 5 configurations. Good reason for that. RAID 0, as I mentioned before, like not as for speed, it's not for reliability. You lose one drive out of a four drive RAID 0, all the data is gone. So just don't use that at all. And then for RAID 5, the array is quite vulnerable if a drive fails during that period where you haven't put in a new drive and let it rebuild itself. While it's rebuilding, if another drive fails, it will all be gone. So it is best to use enterprise class drives. Now finally, let's have a look at Patriot's network map here, where you have the Javelin as the center of the house right there, and then you have uh, you know, a UPS being managed by it, you have external hard drives, a printer, you can back up the Javelin itself to another Javelin over the internet. That's a really cool feature, I love that. Okay, you've got portable devices like phones that you can stream media to, you've got a network media player like a box office hooked up to your TV, Xbox 360, you've got it connected via wire to a wireless router or switch which you can stream media to your laptop or to your computers including Windows and Macintosh computers and finally any UPnP and DLNA devices, and even Linux computers themselves. So there's going to be a full Tech Tips episode coming on the Javelin where we show some of these features, but for now, that is my unboxing. Thank you for checking it out, and I'll turn this around the right way. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips.